The Supreme Court ruled that President Trump can appear on the 2024 ballot, overturning a ruling from Colorado's top court. Justices said Monday that only Congress can enforce the so-called insurrection clause that has been used in arguments to disqualify Trump from holding office. To talk through the ruling, let's bring in Jessica Levinson. She's a CBS News legal contributor and professor at Loyola Law School in Los Angeles. Jessica, good as always to be with you. The vote was unanimous, or the ruling, I should say, was unanimous, but there were two camps. What distinguished those camps? Uh, there was a conservative camp that said not only does Colorado or any state lack the power under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to say that a federal candidate is not qualified, but here's who does have the power. It's Congress, and here's how they can exercise that power through legislation. That was the conservative five-member conservative majority. As you see there on the screen, there was one member who didn't join the majority. It was Justice Amy Coney Barrett. And then there was the liberal concurrence, and they said, why majority are you going so far? The only question is, can Colorado do this? Does a state have the power to say, I'm looking at the Constitution, and I don't think a federal office holder is eligible? And why did you keep going and then start talking about Congress and enabling legislation? Why not keep going? Because it's all confusing. It seems like they did everybody a favor by keep going. I'm only being slightly obtuse because, it, it, I mean, people would look at this and say, well, if it was an open question, why not, you know, toss it back to Congress, have them settle this? Because it was obviously, you know, people don't know what the, what the actual answer is here. What's wrong with sending it back to Congress? So the liberal justices would say, we only ask the questions answered of us. We're not policymakers. We're people who resolve disputes. We're judges. And the question that was asked of us was, does Colorado have the power? Not who else does. Is it only for Congress? And how can they exercise it? So what the liberals would argue here is that the court went too far. They went out of their lane, and they issued what amounted to an advisory opinion which didn't just say, here's who does have the power, but in doing so, kind of forecloses other routes uh -huh. for saying that people are disqualified. That's where, again, you saw that big disagreement. I have to say, as somebody who's going to be teaching this case, I appreciated the additional guidance from the majority, but arguably it's not where they're supposed to go in terms of exercising restraint. And is it clear, if I had a member of Congress here, is it clear what question I should ask them if they have to? Um, I guess the first question is, will Congress ever actually do anything? They're sent, you know, assignments from the Supreme Court all the time, and they don't get around to them. Um, but if they did get around to it, is there an easy question to ask a member of Congress to figure out if they know what's up here? That, that's a great question. I think the question would be, when you pass that enabling legislation, when you act under Section 5 of the 14th Amendment, which gives Congress the power to enforce the rest of the 14th Amendment, what specifically are you going to provide? When are you going to say that former office holders who engage in an insurrection are no longer eligible to hold office? How will you do that? And I think that would be a great question for a member of Congress, which, as you pointed out, they likely won't confront anytime soon because this is the Congress that can't pass a budget. Well, we'll go find some of them and put that question to them. CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson, thanks so much.